Hi, I'm Kristen, and this is the Simple Handmade Everyday Podcast, where I talk about living a creative, intentional life. I like to chat about quilting, sometimes knitting, and now cross-stitch, what I'm reading and watching, and a little bit about self-care, productivity, and keeping a cozy, organized home. I've got my cup of tea in hand, so grab yours, and let's settle in for a chat. This is episode 91. Hello friends! I feel like I'm always saying this, but I did not mean to take such a long break between podcast episodes, but it's summer and summertime just brings some irregular schedules. But before we get into that, um, grab something fun to drink. I'm not drinking hot tea. It's because it's afternoon on a summer Sunday, so I've got a cup of kombucha, which is um, just fermented tea. I started um, making my own kombucha in June of 2020 during, you know, like lockdown. (laughs) And so I've been doing it for two years pretty consistently. Every once in a while, especially in the winter, um, I will just take a break from it. But that, you know, my little scoby and the starter tea, it just can just sit there until I'm ready for it. So it's a very low, a low pressure hobby, but it is a bit of a hobby because it, it does take some time to, to process. I have really standardized on the fact that I like just straight up first fermentation kombucha Um, and so that keeps the work of bottling down a bit but um, my son is home from college right now and um, so I have been bottling it with a little bit of pomegranate juice just like an ounce or two of pomegranate juice the rest is kombucha you let it sit for a second fermentation and it is quite delicious so that is my um, if you're at all interested in um Brewing kombucha, if you just check episodes from around June of 2020, I talk a lot about it. And there is a great YouTube channel called, um, no, what's it called? You Brew Kombucha, I think is what it's called. So it's good. So back to the summer. It's going so fast. It's already the beginning of August. Now my college kid doesn't go back to school till mid to late September because he's on the quarter system. So we still have some time with him, but you know, already some of his friends are starting to head back to school and where did the summer go and all the things that I was was going to do. <laughs> I find it funny that I do feel my schedule is a little bit strange. In the summer, since in fact I do not have children, you know, in school, I'm not run by those activities. But um, just having my kid home for the summer changes things a little bit, even though it is a, a delight. Um, what else has been going on? If you've been um, listening for a while, you know that back in January I started on a bathroom renovation, and here we are in August, and it is not done, but it is so close to being done. Um, at this point. This is, it's just a partial bathroom renovation. It was uh, ripping out the existing vanity and lighting flooring. And um, so the vanity's in, it's painted, a new floor is in, new toilet, new baseboards. Um, did I already say new paint? Um, new, you know, towel bars and shower hooks and all that kind of stuff is in. What we're waiting for now, which will happen next Friday, is the countertop sink and faucet to go in. Um, I've also ordered a mirror and I'm not at all sure. I I got a custom mirror and I'm not at all sure I got the right frame for it and it's kept me up at night, but I've decided to let that go. Um, But that'll go in um, and then it's just decor, which is like, yikes. Um, But I have been working with Stephanie over at the Make and Decorate podcast. She's like my own little um, (laughs) interior designer. on on text and so she's given me some ideas um and uh and especially in many ways she since she is an interior designer she knows places to look for things and so um i have a a a wall above the bathtub um that is just a big old blank wall i want a big piece of art there um and so we need to to find that and then um we have one of those bathrooms where the toilet is in his own separate room and that's the only thing there and i used to have this thing that hung above the toilet and it was actually quite nice and i'm kind of wondering if i will regret giving it to goodwill just because i'm like i'm ready for this to look different um it just it hung up there it had three little baskets and a shelf and that's where we kept toilet paper extra toilet paper and um like reading materials <laughs> And it worked very well, and I just haven't found anything that I like as well. Um, so I, I do want to finish this project all the way through. Decorative towels, 
um, the the stuff and for that we call it the punishment room where the toilet is and the artwork for the oh and a clock um i like to have a clock we have we've had a, it's like i'm keeping the how it was decorated kind of the same just hopefully updated stuff so still some stuff to buy some decisions to make i will be so happy to not have to make any more decisions about that bathroom um so we are coming into the home stretch it has taken most of the year to get here but i will talk about a lot of this in um on a future episode of stephanie's make and decorate podcast because she has been invaluable to me because I am just I'm not good at this I question my own decisions please see questions about the uh my questioning my decision on the mirror it, it, ultimately it won't really matter I think I will just you know it, it will be what it is um so so that I'm so happy that that is um, almost done the other big project that I had scheduled for this year was a big family trip and we have booked um, our trip to Italy which is in September so it's really coming up so we are into the last month before we go so now we're really getting down to um, I sort of compartmentalized um, figuring out what we're going to going to do in Italy like the the trip was booked we booked through Costco travel it was the, the website was terrible but they made a lot of decisions for you so we're flying into Rome staying for four days then we take the train to Florence I think we're there three days trained to Venice there for three days and so now um, so they help make those decisions you know it was the the air flights the hotels the the train transfers all that's all built in so those were decisions I did not have to make thank goodness but now we need to figure out what we're going to do in each of these cities so we have already my husband and I have kind of figured out Rome and so I just put all this decision making into August I've just been putting it off so um We'll get into Rome. Um, it's going to be tricky. We're going to have to sleep on the plane. We leave at like 8 a.m. our time and we get to Rome 8 a.m. the next day their time. So we're going to have to all somehow get enough sleep on the plane, even though it's the middle of the day for us, so that we have the day that we get there to do things. <laughs> so we've got a bit of a walking tour. Um planned and we're gonna kind of flesh that out today i've been using this website called here i'm gonna pause and tell you what it's called it's called diary of a nomad and this is a person that has lived in italy and um or specifically rome and um so i don't even know if it's a man or a woman but they have a walking tour you know uh you know from start here and in 15 minutes you can be here and you see the trevi fountain and the spanish steps and all the the famous things and you can just you know like spend a few hours walking which probably is a good idea for that first day which is a friday and then the next day we have um an early morning three-hour tour of the vatican and the vatican museums and the sistine chapel and all that stuff and then we've got the rest of the day to do more unstructured things the day after that is a Sunday we have up until two o'clock or 2 30 to do whatever we want I want there to be plenty of unstructured wandering around time but then at 2 30 we have a three hour again they all these tours seem to be three hours tour of the Colosseum and a lot of the the ancient Rome stuff so I think we've got a good balance of unstructured time and um, people telling us the things that we would like to know we should know about what we're looking at and then the next day we have all morning um, and then we will hop on a train to Florence and I have no idea what we're doing from then on That's as far as we've gotten <laughs> but I'm really looking forward to it a um, little nervous about it um, yeah, my husband has, has sort of made it a project to learn some Italian on Duolingo, and I don't think he's gotten very far. I'm going to leave that to somebody else. But um, yeah, so, and so it's me and my husband and my three kids. So this is probably our, our, you know, our my kids are, you know, uh, 19 and above at this point, almost 20. So this will probably be our last really big vacation like this. So um, I'm just hoping that it all goes smoothly and that we don't get covid before during or after <laughs> um obviously a little bit worried about that so um but we are committed we are going the other thing that's been a little um it's been a good thing about the summer so far is um i've been on a sort of a light social media break um and i just realized that i spend too much time scrolling i, I don't I, I don't post that much and i'll talk about that 
um, in a minute, but it's it's such an easy, as I'm sure you a lot of you can relate, it's an easy transition activity if I'm uh, even if, if I'm at work and I'm just like waiting for something, I'm, you know, like I have a few minutes, I just open up Instagram or Facebook or whatever. Or just whenever there's, I, I've just got a, a few minutes. It's what I do. And I didn't like that because then that can just, you know, snowball into spending a lot more time. And um, I've been paying attention to about how I feel when um, I'm doing that. And I'm it's they're not good feelings usually it's usually sometimes I literally say to myself you are wasting time this is dumb why are you doing this um and that is not to say that social media has been a terrible thing always um I think that I really was able to dig into the quilting and crafting industry entirely because of social media um I you know know a lot of you guys from social media one of my best friends in in the world um, is Francis over at the Off Kilter Quilt. And, um, you know, well, we knew each other because of podcasts. Our podcast social media? I don't really know. Anyways, I definitely have made friends from um, from social media. They, and they are real live, you know, I guess that would just be more of an online friendship. So um, it just needs to stay within bounds for me. And, um, and I thought it was getting a little bit out of out of whack. The other thing is that I'm sure you guys have all noticed how the algorithms are changing. So Instagram is turning into a video platform. And I have no desire to make reels. I just, um, I loved for a period of my life just taking pictures of what I was working on and being very, um, I used to at least try to post once a day. And then um, as I, as I, progressed in my quilting and things and then I got a little pickier about you know staging nicer photographs which takes time and then crafting a thoughtful caption takes time and and then I started doing it less because it just seemed like more work even though I enjoyed taking the photos but now I have noticed um, when I post a photo or a story just a tiny fraction. I have a business account, so I can actually look at the insights. A tiny fraction of people actually it is it see it. It's it's served up to. So and I mean a tiny fraction, like less than 10%. And it's because it's not a video. Um and then when I go on my account to, you know, just to scroll I feel like it's mostly people I don't even know. It's a lot of videos and it's a lot of people um, that they think that I will like their content. And that's what they're getting there, this algorithm situation from TikTok, where you, I'm not even sure, I'm not on TikTok, I'm just not even going there. But my kids, when it first came out, were saying how you don't follow people as much as TikTok figures out what you like. And, and they were saying it was incredibly accurate. Um, and so now that's what Instagram is doing. They're sh- showing me things that they'll think I'll like. And sometimes they are right, but at the expense of not seeing the people that I have actually decided to follow so I'm just I'm very frustrated with all of it and so um so I'm just on it less and um and we do have the simple handmade everyday private Facebook group which is a very nice place and and I'm just going to be honest and say I've not been posting there because as much because of this because of my whole you know what I'm probably best served to stay off of it um but I it is a good way for us to stay in contact so I'm I'm trying to figure it out so what I did is I took Facebook and Instagram off my phone and um, I do have them on my tablet, so I can check in if I want, but um, the, the phone is what's with me most of the time. So that was just, and it's funny because I would pick up the phone to do something and I'd be like, there is nothing to do on this phone. <laughs> if, if they're not, I could read the news again, but I don't really want to do that. So I'm just like, put it down and read a book or go do something else. So, so that is, you know, where I'm at with social media. Um, someday I feel like I would like to get off it entirely, but I, I don't think I will because it is a good way to reach out to you guys to say there's a new episode. I also work with a lot of, um, not a lot, I work with some brands, you know, and quilt alongs and things like that. And I want to be able to post about those and, and use those hashtags and be able to share stuff that I'm doing with the, with the Fat Quarter Shop or Silk and Sonder or, or whoever. Um, and so I probably won't let it go entirely, but I'm just trying to figure out what the new normal is. Wow, I didn't think I would talk about that for so long. Um, but one thing I am thinking about in relation to that is um, realizing how much I miss blogging, like old school blogging. 
um, which I did when the kids were little. My blog was called They Grow Up Too Fast, and it was just a straight up mommy blog. I eventually, I didn't take those posts down, but that's when I turned um, that into the kristinesser.com, which is now, um, you know, my simple handmade everyday blog, which is where I, I post show notes and, and things like that. And I was thinking about, you know, dipping my toe back in the water of taking some pretty photos and just sharing with you guys that way, where I have a little bit... Um, I don't know. It just feels different. It feels like it's more under my control than Facebook um, or or Instagram. Um, but it is harder for people to go read those things be, because, you know, social media is like the one place you can go and see everybody and not have to search things out. But, but I don't really do a lot of the blogging for other people. It's kind of a nice record. It's a way for me to process, um, you know, the things that are happening in my life. So anyways, um, I think I'm going to uh, maybe dip my toe back into the blogging waters. Well, before we head on into the quilting section, I'd once again like to thank the Fat Quarter Shop for being such a wonderful sponsor of this podcast. The Fat Quarter Shop is a one-stop show for quilting fabrics and supplies for quilters around the world. They stock quilt shop quality fabrics, pre-cuts, quilt kits, patterns, notions, and even cross-stitch supplies, as I have really learned lately. <laughs> so um, they just recently released the Christmas Time Mystery um, Sew Along Quilt Kit. So the mis- Christmas Mystery quilt along and stitch along is going to be happening here in August. It's been pushed out, I think, because of um, they have not received the Christmas fabrics from their vendors so that you guys can, you know, buy Christmas fabrics to to quilt along. So I think that's going to be happening soon. And I am definitely involved in that. And um, so just between you and me, um, I've seen the patterns (laughs) for both the quilt along and the stitch along, and you are going to love them. And so um, definitely um, be checking the Jolly Jabber for that. I'll put a link in the show notes as I've had in past episodes to the quilt kit. You can use, if you use their kit, they are using a line called Christmas Stitched by Fig Tree Quilts. And it's very, very cute. I personally am using a line from um, Gingerbur called Merry Making. And it is just, it's got reds and greens but also blues and whites with silver highlights and um, I find it absolutely delightful so I'm um, I got a a layer cake to work on that uh, mystery quilt and I hope you join me doing that so I will put a link in the show notes for all of this and um, I hope that you you join me okay on to quilting I have a confession to make I have not felt like quilting very much this summer I think this happens to me a lot in the summer where it feels too hot to sew. Um, I live in Southern California, so it does get hot. We try to be judicious about running the air conditioning and the way my little sewing area is set up, the, the, the iron is right behind me. And I just realized that I get really hot when I sew. <laughs> and, um, and I think it, there's a lot of moving around. There's getting up and going to the design wall and going to the ironing. I remember Francis would say, knitting is sitting and quilting is moving. And I I think that is definitely true. So I actually was confessing to a few friends of like, I just do not feel like sewing. And I'm beginning to get worried about like, am I done? Am I done with quilting? And I've been here before. If you've listened to this for a few years, this is not the first time that I have lost my, my sojo as they call. Um, but I have also what is responsible for this is that I have recently become obsessed with cross stitching and it is just so convenient to sit down and stitch. It's, um, you know, I also am a huge advocate of hand piecing um, and I've, you know, done several hand piece quilts longs and that, you know, kind of can feel, I, list, I love hand work, but there's a more like a lot of cutting and um, marking and things like that. So you have to kind of get yourself prepped in order to stitch. But with cross stitch, there's really very little prep involved. So it's just so easy to sit down and just pick up where you left off. But I have also worried, well, if I don't quilt, like, will you guys still even want to listen to me? Like, (laughs) then I have this identity crisis, but I've just decided to go where, you know, I'm just going to pursue my bliss in terms of my hobbies. But so the other day, I have been trying to take Fridays off of work, works better 
some weeks than others, but I did just had a very um, fulfilling day of puttering around the house doing all kinds of, of little projects. And one of those was some stuff that I needed to sit down at the sewing machine for. My husband wanted me to hem some pajamas. Um, one of our dogs chewed through the dog bed and I needed to <laughs> to sew that hole closed. I needed to sew on a button, like things like that. So I sat down at the machine, I even had to change the thread to uh, hem the pajamas. And um, so after I did that, I was like, oh, you know, this space here is uninspiring. It's a mess. Let me start to clean it up. Because, you know, when you're not sewing, then that big table can become a catch-all. So I spent the next hour or so just wiping things down and reorganizing and putting things away. And, um, so one of the things that um, that's been kind of sitting there was a wall hanging quilt that I had the blocks done and it just needed um, sashing and borders to finish it up. And I thought, okay, you know what I'm gonna do is I've been meaning to do this forever, um, like to finish this quilt top, but um, I need to cut the sashing and borders. So I'm just gonna cut the sashing and borders right now. Um, so I cut the sashing and then I'm like, well, you know, it wouldn't take that long to just sew it on. So I sewed them on. <laughs> And then, and then at that point, then I could cut the borders because, you know, you have to wait so you can measure. So you cut your borders for exactly what your quilt is coming out to. And so then I cut the borders and then I sewed the borders on and then I gave it a good press. And I was like, oh, you know what? I actually like to sew. This is fun. <laughs> so that was like exactly what I needed. Just like this very small project. So I've got some gran great granny square um, blocks. I have honestly kind of failed on that quilt along this summer. Um, on the quilting part, I did do the cross stitch along part. Um, so, um, but I don't, it's not even over. So I could still catch up or I can, you know, still pursue it. So I just have a couple more, I have four blocks almost done for that. Um, so I'm going to hopefully maybe finish that this afternoon, post some pictures. Um, so anyways, it turns out I like to sew, but you know, sometimes you just kind of have to let it go and, and, and ride out your bliss there. So, but I have found that before that if I'm feeling uninspired, then kind of straightening up and getting organized and seeing what you have and being reminded is a good way to get going again. So, um, so that is where I am with quilting. But some other things quilting related I'd like to talk about is um, I got my first um, issue of Quilt Folk magazine. Have you seen this magazine? It is so gorgeous. It's like a book. And I got issue 23, which is the North Carolina issue. And actually, I really, to be honest with you, I bought it because my friend Frances um, O'Rourke Dowell, she is the off-kilter quilt and um, the author of the the quilt fiction podcast and, and the all the books that she does under the quilt fiction name like um, Friendship Album 1933, Margaret Goes Modern, Birds in the Air. These are all um, quilt quilt stories, quilty stories that um, are absolutely delightful. And if you have not, I will put some links in the show notes. You need to check her out. I'm, I'm assuming you know who she is. But anyway, she wrote three articles for this and I love Frances's writing. I'm like, I'm going to buy that. And then it is filled with people that I just know, these online friendships um, Charles, um, his, I don't know his last name, but his handle on Instagram has felt like sweet. Um, here's his article. I can tell you Charles's name right now is Charles Cameron and Michelle Wilkie is in here. Just so many, um, amazing people in here. What a pepper Corey. I don't, not that I know pepper Corey at all, but I know of pepper Corey. So anyways, um, the photography in this magazine is amazing. It's just like been sitting on my um, coffee table for a month now as I just pick it up and just read these little bite-sized pieces, um, these these stories. Different, like there's one about a quilt guild. Um, Frances's, uh, one of her stories is about these kinds of quilts called tobacco quilts that um, back in the day they would use quilts, you know, to like layer tobacco on. They would be like, the, the ultimate utility quote they would eventually when they were out they would just destroy them which is like heartbreaking so anyways um i highly recommend um quilt folk magazine it's a little pricey you know but I, if there are little epi uh, little issues here and there um, i'm definitely going to be getting more of those the other quilting book that i got this is um a book put out by the fat quarter shop the their it's so emma 
um, imprint and it's called Scrappiness is Happiness and it is a new um, scrap quilt book um, of patterns by Lori Holt and um, Lori Holt is <laughs> the designer of a lot of the cross stitch patterns that I've been doing so I'm kind of um, I used to think that Lori Holt was just a little too cutesy for me although I do own a lot of her fabric she's got some great fabric um, but I have just a new appreciation for Lori Holt um, recently so this book it's a book of different kinds of scrap quilts and there are a ton of quilts in this book and it's spiral bound so it lays flat and in addition to some pretty she, she takes a lot of traditional quilt blocks kind of puts her own spin um, on the setting and things like that so you know we've got a straight up Irish chain a straight up string quilt a straight up friendship star um, log cabin things like that but she's done some interesting things with the layout for them um, which is kind of inspiring so I, I have about three or four quilts that I think I'm going to tackle my scrap bin and pick and, and start with these you know one of them is just the Irish chain and she you know I have an Irish free Irish chain pattern but hers is a little bit different I'm like oh that would be kind of fun I will never make this quilt but it is so cute it's called the applesauce quilt and she's got two apple blocks one is a normal apple block and one is an apple core block which is so cute and she's got the same kind of a thing with pumpkins two pumpkin blocks um, a fat pumpkin a short fat pumpkin and a tall skinny pumpkin and then even within those two she's got a solid like the, the pumpkins one color or she has one that it's more um, like a patchwork of colors so it really breaks the quilt up in an adorable way so um, check this out online it is just it's very cute and I, I think it's so nice to have these kinds of um, Oh, here's a house block quilt that is very cute. It's great to have these kind of things as resources so that when you are feeling uninspired, you can dig through your scraps and go, you know what, I'm going to put those scraps to use um, with, with one of these quilts. And she, um, I mean, her, she, I guess she uses on her own scraps or her own fabrics go together so well. But she, it doesn't even look like she does much ex of following a color scheme for a lot of these it's just like a bonnie hunter like it all goes in there baby um although this i'm looking at this applesauce quilt again which i said i would never make and now i kind of want to make it um she's got because apples come in different colors she's got red ones pink ones yellow ones and green ones which is very cute so that scrappiness is happiness you might want to check that out i'll put a link in the show notes for you there um another quilt along that i'm doing um actually i'm going to do the stitch along um, with the fat quarter shop they've just had so much fun stuff lately I gotta tell you is so October is breast cancer awareness month right I think we all know that and everyone's wearing pink socks and things like that um, but that quarter shop once again who does so much great charity work is, is put their, putting their money where their mouth is and again Lori Holt here has designed a quilting pattern and a cross stitch pattern called support group <laughs> <laughs> and it is um, one two three it's it's 12 blocks same block except for um, different colors or whatever but they are bras they could be bikini tops too but they're let's just face it they're really bras and so you just make the same block over and over like but you can change up the colors and stuff and so they have a very cute quilt pattern and um, I watched one of Fat Quarter Shop's live streams recently and Kimberly Jolly, the owner, was saying that she and her husband are donating $5,000 and Lori Holt is donating $5,000 to breast cancer. Um, I Actually, I meant to, okay, to the National Breast Cancer Foundation. It's right here on the pattern. Um, and they're doing this this sew along and encouraging people to, to make a donation, so which I absolutely will. Um, so there is, as I said, a, a lot of these um, sew alongs that the Fat Quarter Shop does, there's a quilt pattern and a cross stitch pattern. So I, for this one, um, they released it now. So you can get the stuff now. So you could get, um, and then they will do the sew along in October. But if you were like me, you often need a, um, a head start. <laughs> Not always so good at keeping up with the sew alongs. So um, I'm going to do the cross stitch. And um, so I have ordered my supplies. There is a, um, 
uh, the pattern and then they do a floss um, pack you can do whatever you want but there is a floss pack if you want to do it the way that that Lori Holt has and some of these ones on the cross stitch they're gingham they're so cute and then there's even like a floss holder that goes with it and this adorable needle minder of a pink bra and I think it's so cute so um, I am a um, in November it will be a 20 years uh, since I had cancer. So I'm a breast cancer survivor. And I really like it when companies really um, put money towards a foundation. So like, you know, the whole, um, the wearing pink to raise awareness does nothing if people are not actually contributing to breast cancer charities. I mean, this is obviously true of all this kind of stuff. So wearing pink does nothing. Um, you know, but supporting a company that is donating and making your own donations, that is really putting your money where your mouth is. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, what else do I want to talk about? Okay, the last thing quilting related is, um, I assume a lot of you know who Melanie Ham is from, um, she had a, a YouTube channel. She was a quilter, crocheter, just, you know, all around crafter. And she was, I think, really one of the first successful YouTubers in, um, in our industry. And she tragically died a few months ago. Um, I believe she had some sort of liver cancer or something I, I can't exactly remember um but I, I kind of you know tracked her mm. you know I've been watching her for a long time um and kind of track what was going on with her and her husband and she's like she's in her like late 30s I think I mean she was so young um her husband is a filmmaker and he made a um a film about her life called Made with Melanie and it's on YouTube and I did not watch it beginning to end I kind of skipped around it's it's hard for me I had cancer when I was 36 so it's it is hard for me to um, sometimes watch these these types of things because it hits really close to home and I'm so grateful and blessed that my story um, has had a different ending but um, if you um, watched Melanie and um, you're kind of interested in that, I will put um, a link to that video in the show notes. It's called Made with Melanie, and it's on YouTube. And he did a beautiful job. It it starts, you know, at the beginning of her career and ends with scenes from her funeral. Um, so um, you might want to check that out. Okay, let's talk a little bit about cross stitch. Now, I asked on another podcast like how many of you guys um, also cross stitch? So you know, sometimes I talk about knitting, um, and and that is a common uh, secondary hobby for quilters. And apparently, qu- cross stitch. A lot of you also cross stitch. And if you don't, you should give it a try because it is, it is surprisingly fun. <laughs> so let me talk about that. So I've been working on a project for the Fat Quarter Shop, which I can't re- really reveal much about, um, but. I have learned, I'll talk more about that later, but I have learned as I've done this that um, using higher quality Ada cloth, even just 14 count, so it's not, you know, linen or even weave or anything like that, um, there is a difference. There is a difference. I have got some cheap Ada cloth that I bought during the pandemic that is just, it's like, it's so kind of plasticky and and, and, and stiff. So I was using the, it's, I think it's called the uh, Witchelt brand um i bought it from fat quarter shop and it's um the, it's kind of the, like a brown craft paper color so it's it's very cute and it's just and it even gets softer i stitch in hand which means i don't use a hoop i don't use the q-snap i just hold it and i sew um i, I cross stitch keeping my hand on top of the the work as much as possible just that's what's the as a hand sewer that's what's the most natural for me so that was one discovery now when I first decided I was going to um, try cross stitching I bought a um, a kit from the fat quarter shop or 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 I guess it wasn't a kit so much as is their recommendations and it was the um oh I finished it did I ever show you a picture it's called like um oh shoot quilt sew press cut sew press something like that and it's it's I, I, what I've decided about cross stitching is I like some of the crossover quilty stuff so it has an iron and some scissors and a sewing machine that, that kind of a motif and um again it's a Lori Holt pattern and I um just got the the um 
the colors, the, the whole floss pack that, that came with it. And I got this what's called 25 count Lugana fabric. So 14 count Ada cloth is 14 squares per inch. Um, 25 count Lugana is 25 squares per inch. So with the, the squares are a lot tinier, almost, you know, half the size, right? So in that case, you stitch with two, it's called two over two, two um, things of floss, two threads over two squares at a time. And, and it, when I got that and saw, I was just like, no, I'm not doing this. I'm going for the 14 count. I don't understand this. I barely understand cross stitch. I don't, I'll totally mess up if I do this two over two. Even though I have been assured by watching many of YouTube videos that your mind starts to see the spacing of it and it's not as hard as you think. So now I knocked back three cross stitch projects and I'm like, okay, I think I'm ready to try stitching two over two. So I got this um, Fat Quarter Shop um, as a sponsor sends me um, some goodies. And boy, this last one was like full of fun things, including these things that are called stitch cards. Again, Lori Holt, <laughs> because Kimberly Jolly loves Lori Holt too. So these stitch cards, I didn't really know what they were. Um, it's four little patterns um, and they're each on like a recipe card and that comes in a pack and there's like a theme for each pack. So I have what's called set M and it has a teapot, a teacup. So obviously this is so me. And then two, one that's just like a strawberry and one that's uh, got four strawberries. It's, it's just a little design with strawberries. And these designs, they're only 34 stitches wide and tall. They're square. So 34, so 34 squares. So obviously they're very small. Does it, let me open it here. Um, I bet I could tell you how big they are. So if you count, do, oh well, 14 count Ada. So this would be like a little over two inches. And the if you go 25 count Lugana, it's a little bit bigger. Um, 14 out, yeah, they're two and a half by two and a half. 25 count is two and three quarters by two and three quarters. So I thought this is, you know, a good way for me to see if I can handle stitching two over two. I'm doing the teapot and, um, it was a little dicey at first, but I think I have the hang of it now. Um, I've made mistakes, but I always make mistakes in cross stitch. <laughs> Learned. <laughs> um, so that has been really fun. I am maybe halfway done with that um, little teapot. And I think I'll do, I wish I had cut my fabric a little bit differently and I would do like three or four of these in a row and make like a, um, like a bookmark. My friend Vicki over at My Creative Corner 3, she... Um, also has recently gotten into cross stitch. I think I'd like to take credit for telling her to do that. <laughs> we'll see. But she did the little great granny squares and I did mine like in a square, four in a square and she did them um, vertically and then she um, cut them out and fused them to some felt and turned it into a bookmark. And I'm like, oh, that was brilliant because I don't know what I'm going to do with mine. And so um, I'll see what I can do differently um, with this. See if I can figure out a way to make this into a little bookmark or something. But these stitch cards are just a great way to to try a new skill like that. So that has been fun. Um, what else? My friend Francis and I are stitching on um, doing a cross stitch project together too. I'm spreading the love people. And we decided on the um, free chart called Little Quaker ABC, which you can find on the Aura Buzz website, their blog. And there is a fabulous cross stitcher and quilter named Susan Aki. And she um, designs little free cross stitch patterns um, for, for Aura Floss. For, Aura Floss is the name of the floss. Aura Phil is the company. Aura Buzz is the blog. Um, so and she likes these little Quaker samplers, which is a whole genre of cross stitch. And um, so it's delightful. I'll put a link in the show notes, but um, Francis and I are going to work on that together. And I am waiting for um, some nicer um, white background. Oh, I could do it on the brown background. That would be cute too. Um, but I do have the cheap Aura Floss, which is what, or Aura Floss, a, the cheap um, Ada Cloth. But I've got some nicer stuff coming and I might just wait for that because now I'm becoming a snob about the quality of my Ada cloth. 
<laughs> and then lastly, I purchased um, fr flea market flowers and the floss that goes with that. It's another, it's a pretty, it's a larger, um, it's, it's a larger project. I think it's about 14 by 14 inches, if I'm not mistaken. And it's again, designed by Lori Holt, but it has a very Scandinavian flower look to it, kind of a toll flower that really have appealed to me. Um, so I think that all those projects together, I think are going to pretty much take me to the end of the year. So, so I'm, I'm good. Um, but one other one, I don't know if I'll get to it, but there's another pattern called you are the boss. Um, and it says, so it is a project with, you know, it's cross stitch, but it's got quilt blocks all around it. And in the center are the words, you are the boss of your own quilt. And, or you, I think it also maybe comes with some lettering. So you could make it say whatever you want, or you could fill in those spaces with just more quilt blocks. But I do love the look of cross stitched quilt blocks. Um, so that's another, if you were a quilter slash um, cross stitcher, uh, that's a new pattern that just came out from, from Fat Quarter Shop. Whew. Okay, so the last thing that I want to talk about along the line of needle craft is um, in my last podcast, I talked about how I was, I love the process of cross stitch, but I was struggling with finding patterns that kind of reflect my own personal style. That's still the case. I'm just enjoying the process part of it right now. And um, someday when I have more of my own studio, I think a lot of these, you know, or sewing room, these will be very cute in a sewing room wall. I'm not, you know, I'm not hanging these quilty ones in my living room, for instance. But um, there's a quilt designer. Um, I can't think of her name right now, but the company is um, Initial K Studios. She, so she does fabulous um, modern quilt designs. And she also does needlepoint designs. And needlepoint and cross stitch are very similar. From my research, it looks like needlepoint is using a thicker thread and it's only like a half cross stitch. It doesn't cross. It just goes one way, but it's fatter. So it fills in. And also with needlepoint, I think that they call it more of a canvas, uh, the fabric that you're working on, the holes are bigger and the, and the design is often painted right on it, um, which can be true for cross stitch too. Um, but she has some fabulous um, kits um, of, of basically quilt of like just modern designs that she also has quilt designs for mostly. Um, it, it's, it's a little, it's a little bit pricey for me. Um, but I don't know, I'm going to keep my eye on those because they are definitely kind of just like more works of modern art on your wall done in, um, you know, needle and thread. So uh, I'll put, a, I'll put a link to, I think she has an Etsy shop, um, for initial case studios. This episode is becoming a doozy here. <laughs> We're already at like 42 minutes. Okay. When I don't podcast for a while, I keep lists of things I want to talk about. And I talk to you guys in my head all the time. And I also would like to acknowledge all of you who comment in your head. I'm feeling those vibes as well. <laughs> so let's talk about books. I've been listening to a lot of audiobooks because that goes really well with handwork. And because it's summer, I'm definitely keeping the reading light. Not that I don't always keep my reading light. But um, so let me just kind of tell you some, some recommendations of stuff that I've enjoyed. So I was doing a, um, a Louise Penny Inspector Gamache re-listen from the beginning. And I've gone all the way through um, A Long Way Home. And now I'm taking a break because I have officially wrapped around to some books that I read, I listened to like as early as like last April. And I'm like, okay, I, I need a break here. But it was fun to go from the beginning through, I think I went gone through about 10 books. I, um, and so that has been fun. They are my, they are my comfort space. And um, so another book that became available um, on, where did I, probably BookBub, between Chirp, which is cheaper audiobooks, and BookBub, which are cheaper ebooks. Um, I've gotten some emails of, for some books that I have been waiting for that I was able to get less expensively. So I like this um, author named Ellery Adams. She has a series called The Secret Book and Scone Society. I've talked about some of her books already on this podcast, but her, I think it's the fourth one came out a while back and it's called Vanishing Type. 
and um, I couldn't get it from the library or from Libby or and so I, I was just I didn't quite want to spring for it <laughs> so I've been waiting and finally um, Bookbub told me that it was available and I bought it for like $1.99 or something so that was definitely worth the wait so the secret book and scone society in general is about a group of women who live in this town called Miracle Springs in North Carolina it's a little sort of spa resort town and um, there is just the the tiniest hint of a little bit of magical realism um, but not really uh, so the main character owns a bookshop and her sort of her I'm going to call it her superpower is helping people process whatever their issues are through books and not just like through nonfiction but even reading um, reading fiction books with people who are um, grieving or enduring loss or a divorce or even on the children's side um, you know bullying or you know dealing with uh, body image issues things like that so um, so she has a bookstore another character has a bakery and she uh, bakes these things called comfort scones she kind of just gets a vibe off of you and she creates your own custom uh, flavored scone that when people eat them will like bring them back make them process things that will bring them back to their childhood with something that needs to be done or you know just different how those tastes can take you to different times in your life so it's got characters like that so there's always a little mystery involved where they get together and and work on solving it and, and it's just one of those character driven novels that I that I really enjoy so Vanishing Type is the next one in the series um, you know I, I hesitate to even tell you what the mystery is because the mystery is irrelevant <laughs> <laughs> the mystery is just a vehicle um, to uh, to spend some time with with these characters and um, and the friendship. It's kind of a group of unlikely friends um, that each bring something very specific to their little little group of friends. And anyways, um, I read it in like three days. I just really enjoyed it. Now Ellery Adams also writes other books. She has this um, book retreat series that I tried to get into but could not and there's more magical realism there and, and once I got to the part where this woman was just gonna you know like the the mantle of of protecting this or that was being passed down to her I was like no no this is not my thing which is sad because I really like her writings <laughs> but um and maybe I'll revisit that in the in the um future but uh, this particular series is the one that I like um I also um I guess this was also it was an audiobook that I gotten through Chirp. So again, Chirp has audiobooks that you know the normal ones are you know, $25, $27. But if you just check in with it or get their emails, they go, you know, on sale and you tell them what kind you like, mystery, historical fiction, romance, whatever you want, and they will let you know when things go on sale. So I got um MC Beaton. He one of his characters is Agatha Raisin. And it was called, I think it's the first one. It is, it's the first one. It's called Agatha Raisin and the Quiche of Death. And I'm reading it and I'm thinking, this seems really familiar to me. And I'm listening to it rather. And it's a good reader. Um, and so then I went on to Amazon Prime or Acorn, uh, probably, and um, realized that they had made a movie of it. And so I watched the movie. So now I don't have to finish the book because now I know who done it. <laughs> but I was really struck with how um, the way they cast the show. So now that um, I think the Quiche of Death was probably the pilot. And now there were several seasons into the Agatha Raisin um, TV show, which is, you know, where she's solving mysteries with her little, you know, band of misfits. misfits. But um, I would not have cast it the way they had. <laughs> based on the book and um, so she's a very different character I think in the book than she is on the show and the show she's like everybody loves her and she's got this larger than life personality and and um, she's kind of more in the book um, a little more dour and socially awkward and really doesn't have any friends and, and things like that so I thought that was kind of interesting um, how different the book and the TV show or the movie was so that was enjoyable um, uh, in terms of cr like fun crafty fiction I read a book called and I think I also this might be available for free on prime reading called 
assault and batting. <laughs> so it's like another quilt shop kind of um, a cozy mystery. And this is about a girl whose um, mother dies unexpectedly. And so she goes back to her hometown to tw take over her quilt shop, her mother's quilt shop. And it turns out her mother had become a very successful YouTube had a very successful quilting YouTube channel, like in a way, think Jenny Doan from Missouri Star type of a deal. And um, so, and she also is taking over, um, helping to raise her younger sister, who's about um, 15 or 16 at this point. And um, so this, this is a series. This is, so this was just the first one. So it's setting it up and um, she and her sister are looking into the death of their mother um, because they feel like it's a little suspicious and, um, and yeah, it was, it was uh, quite fun. So I think there's going to be more in that, that series and she's going to be taking over her YouTube channel. And, um, yeah, so I really enjoyed that. And that was called Assault and Batting. Always links in the show notes. Don't worry about writing it down. So other than that, so those are more of the, the quilty ones. Oh, no, no, more, more, um, Jeffrey Archer, another one of my favorite authors. So he um, has a, a new series, the, the William Warwick series, which is so fun. The William Warwick series is fun because it is the, um, the series of books that a character from another series called the Clifton Chronicles, there's a character in that book, those books that writes the William Warwick stories and becomes a very famous author for doing that. So now Jeffrey Archer has decided to um, write those William Warwick novels. And it's the fourth one. And I'm listening to it as an audio book and it's called Over My Dead Body. And um, I mean, Jeffrey Archer is just, he's such a good storyteller. It's just like, you just, you got to read one after another. I've talked about the Clifton Chronicles several times. I've I think I've read or listened to them both during um, the time of this podcast. And I always think I'm just going to listen to one or read one, but the everyone ends on a cliffhanger and you just have to keep going. <laughs> um, so, okay. I am just, it's, the time is going so fast here. So before I go, before I finish out books, even though I, I literally have another pile of books here to talk about, we'll do, save that for next time. Um, again, my friend Frances O'Rourke, O'Rourke Dow, sorry if I'm messing your name up, Frances, Frances O'Rourke Dow, she is a children's book author, and she has written a book called Hazard. And um, it's a middle grade fiction, which is not the same as YA, it's younger kids. I actually looked up what middle grade fiction is and it's between the ages of eight and 12. Um, and this book, I just, I want to talk about it because if you've got somebody in your life, a child, grandchild, niece or nephew, I think this would be a great book for them. So um, Hazard is a boy and he, um, his father is um, was a soldier in Iraq and was injured. And Hazard's having a hard time dealing with this. And so he's a football player and he is acting out on the football field to the point where he gets suspended and he starts seeing um, a therapist. And the whole book is his sort of his emails and um, exercises that he needs to do questions things that he needs to write down for um, for his therapist as he's working through his issues. And the whole book is written, um, it's poetry, but it's it's um, like the type of poetry that doesn't rhyme. <laughs> what is that called? I want to call it prose. That's not what I don't think that prose is just writing. But um, it's so in a, in a way, like I it's sometimes when I would read it, it, it would almost sound the way like, especially from the hazard side of things, um, would sound like rap. You know, so that that type of, of a cadence, um, but the way that the story um, kind of drips out over time as you see um, Hazard maturing and processing things um, is, is amazing. It's a beautifully written book, and um, I am definitely going to uh, be getting this as a gift for some um, nieces and nephews in my family, and I, I encourage you to check that out. All right, let's move on to um, shows. Um, 
again, cross-stitch pairs so nicely with watching television. <laughs> so I've got a few shows to talk about. I've talked about The Morning Show on Apple TV before. Um, I think we were in the middle of it. We finished that. And um, I see that Reese Witherspoon was nominated for an Emmy. I And she is fabulous. I would have nominated Jennifer Aniston. I just did not really realize what an a good actress Jennifer Aniston is. So I really have enjoyed that. It is not a comedy. It is not a light and breezy show. It is um, dark <laughs> and intense, which was a complete surprise to me. So that's on Apple TV. Um, the show we just finished is on Hulu. So the rest of these I think I'm going to talk about are on Hulu. Um, and one is called The Bear. It's not about a bear. Let me just tell you that right now. It's about a fine dining chef. He's young. He's in his 20s. He was in New York, worked at the best restaurant in the world. And his brother dies and leaves him his sandwich shop in Chicago. So he leaves his career to go to this struggling um, mess of a sandwich shop called The Beef <laughs> in Chicago. And the show is um, really about him trying to turn that place around and institute some of the things that he's learned being a classically trained like, like French chef. And it is a bumpy road and it gives you a very good idea of what it's like to work in kitchens. My husband used to work as a cook and I've never wanted to work in the food industry. And um, this confirms that it can be a very toxic environment. Um, so you get some behind the scenes of how um, restaurant uh, kitchens really work. And it's, 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 so that's a wonderful, wonderful show. Definitely check that out. Um, the next season of Only Murders in the Building um, is out. That's the one with Martin Short, um, Steve Martin, and Selena Gomez, um, where they only solve murders that happen in their apartment building in New York. <laughs> which you would think that wouldn't happen very often, but there's two seasons worth of murders. Um, it is hilarious and delightful. Um, the, the chemistry between these two old men and Selena Gomez is just kind of amazing that that even works. Um, but um, so season two kind of picks off, picks up where season one left off. So um, I, I don't want to give too much away there, but that is definitely a, a very fun show. The writing is good. The um, They live in this um, old, old, um, fancy apartment building in New York City. And so the sets are great. Selena Gomez's um, wardrobe is great. Um, yeah, actually, uh, the wardrobe in the set design in the whole show is so fun to watch. So I definitely recommend that. And right now, my husband and I are in the middle of watching Nine Perfect Strangers, also on Hulu. It's a Leon Moriarty book. She wrote What Alice Forgot, Big Little Lies, um, and many other things that I have loved. Um, so I've never read this book. I did not know at all what it was about, um, but it had Nicole Kidman in it. And um, so I'm like, oh, let's give that a try. It's a weird, it's a weird show. If you watch The White Lotus, there's definitely a, a similar vibe um, to it, but it is about nine people who come together at this wellness retreat. Um, they all have issues. They are all, you apply. And um, Nicole Kidman plays this Russian woman who is who owns this, who's in charge of this. And she selects people to be this one cohort. Um, and everybody has some major issues to work out. And so... Um, some pretty weird things start to happen as people are processing their 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 grief and the the activities that they have them do from these weird hikes to sweat lodges to weird concoctions they're having them drink things like that um, so we are uh, just like maybe four episodes in and it's a very weird show but I'm definitely enjoying that so um over on so that's what my my husband and I are watching together I have my own list of things that I watch or listen to um, while I'm stitching on acorn TV which is my very favorite channel in the whole world they have my money forever and I came across um, a show called Harry Wild and it is a show it's a mystery thing of course because that is my deal but it's got Jane Seymour in it and um, so this has been really fun. So she's older. I think she's like, if I'm not mistaken, she, I think she's in her 70s. Um, I was not, I never watched Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman, even though they filmed it right around my house here. 
<laughs> so I've not really seen a lot of things with Jane Seymour, but she's very good. She plays um, a retired, and she's retiring in the first episode, um, per, uh, per English professor. That's what it is, college English professor. And she's not quite sure what she's going to do when she retires, but a little bit of a mystery falls into her lap, as well as um, she gets mugged um, randomly by this kid and then uh, runs into him later and kind of finds out what his story is. And then um, now they are a little dynamic duo of solving mysteries. Her, hu her not her husband, her son, grown son with his own family, is... Um, a detective and so she keeps sort of insinuating herself into his <laughs> investigations and she is not like sweet and compliant she is a um, cranky opinionated stubborn woman um, so she's just like this really strong slightly annoying character which is just it's it's kind of it's it's a fun character to watch so and her name's Harry I don't know what that stands for Harry and um, so it's called Harry Wild that's um so that's been a fun one there's only one season of that and then um uh there's new episodes of broken with the broken wood mysteries which is another a um kind of you know small town in new zealand um a and a, a detective and and kind of two inspectors um that uh, you know just solve a mystery per episode but it's fun um it's just, it's well-written. It's in New Zealand, which is fun. It's just a little bit different. So that's the, the Broken Wood Mysteries. So let me wrap up here with um, a cookbook recommendation. A few episodes ago, I talked about um, Half-Baked Harvest. What was that one called? I'm not even sure. It was a half-baked, she's got several cookbooks out. It was um, one, maybe like Easy Dinners or something like this. Someone recommended to me have she said um and i'm sorry i don't remember who it was said have you tried half-baked harvest super simple so of course i went and got it out of the library immediately and oh my gosh i got home went out into the patio with some sparkling water in my swing chair and started flipping through this and going oh my gosh i want to make every single recipe part of it is that the girl tegan gerard she does her own photography and the photos are out of this world. Um, so I don't even eat breakfast anymore, but I'm flipping through as I'm talking to you. And here are this blueberry lemon pull apart bread, which looks amazing. Buttery croissant strata. Ugh, okay, so so many good things. So I have made some things from this. We had some Nutella, weirdly, in our pantry because my son and his friends from college like well actually there was high school friends they were over here and they decided to do like a great british bake-off thing for cookies and they got into teams and they were gonna make um cookies and then one kid was judging and so they went to the store and they bought all these ingredients the the not well thought thought out part of this is that they did not <laughs> they didn't use a recipe they just made it up which i i was telling them Baking is chemistry. Like you can wing it on tomato sauce, you know, or something, but winging it on a cookie, uh, it might not work. And it really didn't, but they had a lot of fun and that was the most important part. But one of the things that they bought was Nutella and it was just sitting there. I love Nutella, but you know, it's very fattening. So no one was eating it. And as I was flipping through this um, cookbook, see if I can even find it here, there was a recipe for hazelnut brownies, five ingredient hazelnut brownies that just has Nutella, eggs, butter, vanilla, a little bit of flour, like a half a cup, and chocolate chips. And I'm like, okay, this is the perfect way to um, to use this up. And it makes it just a very small pan of brownies. But I made that one night, and it was delicious. It was absolutely delicious. My son said, I like your normal brownies better, which is straight up Ghirardelli box mix. Um, but I think these hazelnut ones were a very nice way to kind of mix it up. So I marked several recipes and actually just last night we made some of her pizza recipes um, and it was supposed to be the night before last because I decided to try her pizza crust recipe which is a no knead bread recipe that you could also use for pizza crust and she said it just had to rise for like it uses rapid rise yeast um, 
and it said it only had to rise for like an hour to two hours and that was not enough it was not risen i let it sit there for the rest of the night and after about six hours it looked pretty good so we're just like okay we'll make pizza tomorrow i didn't even use it i just used my normal pizza dough recipe but so this is called the meanest greenest pizza and let me just tell you what is on it it has pesto sun-dried tomatoes goat cheese um fresh mozzarella and she has you put um this sounds really weird but kale on it like tuscan kale now I, if i'd gone to trader joe's they have tuscan kale but i didn't i just went to a normal grocery store i did put kale i was discussing this at, with my husband at lunch i don't think we'll put the kale on it again i'm not sure what it's bringing to the party um, but then you mix up this she calls it a salad of arugula with lemon and honey and red pepper flakes and um olive oil and when you bring the the pizza out you put this um basically arugula salad over the top of the pizza and oh my gosh, it was so good. It was very good. So it's kind of got a, some specialty ingredients in there. So I think I will, I'll skip the kale next time. Not that it was bad though. Um, then the other one we made is called garden basil pepperoni pizza, which does not sound interesting at all really, except for you, for the sauce, you just used crushed tomatoes like with nothing else like you don't salt them you don't do anything especially you got to use the good ones as those um like the san marzano style so i did that you get the tomato sauce and then it's got mozzarella and provolone both which have a lot of salt that's why you don't have to salt the tomatoes and you put some pepperoni on it and then two cups of cherry tomatoes and garlic and you cook that and then those tomatoes just you know get really soft and smushy and you put some basil on it when it comes out these pizzas were so good so good so those are definitely repeats in our house the two other things that i have on my menu plan for this week is quick filipino adobo um and I'm actually making this because my son's girlfriend was talking about how her grandmother makes these Filipino dishes called adobo. I'd never heard of it before. I ran across in this cookbook. I'm like, I guess I'm making that. So that is um, made with um, pork shoulder and, you know, and it's actually got um, like pineapple in it. And so it's just, it's kind of chunky meat and you're going to serve it over rice with a, with a sauce and um, you serve it over coconut rice, which is just jasmine rice cooked with coconut milk. I don't like coconut people. I will tell you that, but I've learned that coconut milk does not in fact taste like coconut. Um, so we're doing that this week and we're doing Korean beef with yum yum sauce. Um, and so that's kind of like a, I think it's called a bibimbap type thing where it's, it's, um, highly seasoned beef and you serve it over rice with with vegetables with carrots and cucumbers and cooked spinach and things like that and you have a sauce that goes over it so so this is half baked harvest super simple i think um, i this uh, copies from the library i think i'm going to have to purchase it because and maybe get it for my daughter for christmas um because i just think uh, yeah there's just so many really good recipes in it all right, I have more things on my list to talk about, but I think that is just going to have to wait until next time we are over an hour here. And um, I'm not sure when that next episode will be. Uh, we're at the beginning of August. I will try to squeeze another episode in before we go to Italy in September, but September is a crazy month for me, so I'm not sure what's going to happen there. But I miss you guys when, um, when we're not, you know, conversing on a regular basis. So I hope you will excuse use the sort of uh, sporadic nature of these uh, these episodes so um, if you enjoy the podcast I really appreciate everyone who has left a review no new review since the last podcast but uh, it always helps people find um, find the the podcast and I love to read them and I appreciate all the kind words you guys send me whether it's through the reviews or the um, comments on the show notes or the emails that you guys send me I appreciate it all you can find me online at my blog simple handmade every day on instagram at Kristen esser and please consider joining this the simple handmade every day private facebook group so that we can keep the conversation going and feel free to post anything relevant to the things we talk about on this podcast any kind of crafting books shows habits things like that 
go ahead and post them. Don't wait for me to, to post things in that group. Um, just talk amongst yourselves as well. You guys have a great week.